Here, this is a little bit more cheery. Um, so uh, AOC got a little bit more, got uh, a little bit righteous in a um, financial a House Financial Committee hearing. Um, she has been going gangbusters apparently in terms of questioning, like uh, like literally impacting the entire House and raising the bar for uh, other Democratic House members, committee members, on how she questions or how people uh, question. Um, at one point, um, the guy from uh, the real world, what's his name? Uh, Sean Duffy, uh, congressman from uh, Wisconsin, right? Um, he um, was talking about, you know, who's going to pay for, um, he was talking about a lot of uh, economic issues, frankly, um, that are problematic if we implement a lot of the Green New Deal mandates. And the irony is, of course, that everyone was complaining about all of the economic policies that were embedded in the Green New Deal proposal. Yet it becomes clearer when you're addressing that critique, when you're, when you're addressing the critique of the Green New Deal that it's going to displace people and that coal miners aren't going to have jobs. The Green New Deal puts in more funding not only for retraining coal miners, but also, do you remember this? Allowing coal miners who may not be able to switch jobs at age 45 or 50 to basically just get funding to live their lives. Retire early. Yeah. God forbid. That's way more than they're getting now. And that's all these things, like a job guarantee, right? Right is built into the Green New Deal to address the things that, uh, what's his name again, Duffy? Duffy says. Now, of course, he tries to make it because AOC is from New York and because she's a woman, I suspect, who, you know, um, is young, tries to sell the elite thing. And here is her response. This is number three. But aside from that, when we talk about uh, the concern of the environment as an elitist concern, one year ago, I was waitressing in a taco shop in downtown Manhattan. I just got health insurance for the first time a month ago. This is not an elitist issue. This is a quality of life issue. You want to tell people that their concern and their desire for clean air and clean water is elitist? Tell that to the kids in the South Bronx, which are suffering from the highest rates of childhood asthma in the country. Tell that to the families in Flint, whose kids have their blood is ascending in, in lead levels. Their brains are damaged for the rest of their lives. Call them elitist. Tell, you're telling them that those kids are trying to get on a plane to Davos? People are dying. They are dying. And the response across the other side of the aisle is to introduce an amendment five minutes before a hearing and a markup. This is serious. This should not be a partisan issue. This is about our constituents and all of our lives. Iowa, Nebraska, broad swaths, swaths of the Midwest are drowning right now underwater. Farms, towns that will never be recovered and never come back. And we're here and, and people are more concerned about helping oil companies than helping their own families? I don't think so. I don't think so. This is about our lives. This is about American lives. And it should not be partisan. Science should not be partisan. This, we are facing a national crisis. And if we do not ascend to that crisis, if we do not ascend to the, to, to the levels in which we were threatened at the Great Depression, when we were threatened in World War II, if we do not ascend to those levels, if we tell the American public that we are more willing to invest and bail out big banks than we are willing to invest in our farmers and our urban families, then I don't know what we're here doing. Didn't work out the way you wanted it, child. Go off, Queen. It's a little tough. She gonna be uh, thirty-five by uh, twenty twenty-four? Can we get the? Uh, can we find that out? 
2028, right? No, she's 28, so no. 2028. 2028. Oh. As my, my Woke Bros uh, producer, Rob Lopez, who's from the Bronx, said that that video was like his mom telling him, no, you cannot stay out past your curfew. Right. <laughs> um, we got a curfew, all right. The human race has a curfew. The other clip, I mean, she she went on uh, about, uh, uh, you know, having, but it's it's more or less the same, right? I mean, I think it covers a lot of the same territory. I mean, right now we have in, um, is it North Dakota or Montana? I mean, we had uh, Native Americans, uh, a tribe, Nebraska, who were completely um, isolated for two or three weeks because of uh, floods and uh South Dakota. Um, whole towns just destroyed. And it, these things don't come back. And to show how like unprepared this country is for it, not only are the Native Americans who you, you think like are under the environmental gun in this country, uh, we lost a bunch. Of, we lost 10% of America's F-22s because they didn't move them out of a Nebraska hangar fast enough. So like we're so flat-footed with climate change right now that well, even the military is not prepared enough yeah if you can't muster the energy to care about humans you should at least care about the poor f-22s i there mean a lot of the f-22s that were hurt by that i a lot you know of the f-22s i'd be very curious if that wasn't like oh this is a good, great opportunity for us to get 10 more you know 10 percent more uh contracts That's contracts yeah well you guys will be uh feel more secure knowing that the job that Sean is trying to get on right now in uh, construction is building a giant seawall in New York City. Yeah. The, uh, New York is actually one of the few places where uh, you can actually do that and have it have an impact in terms of like the cost. The cost benefit analysis is such that uh, they will build that. But in Miami, it's not going to make a difference because it's built on basically a sponge. And off the coast of North Carolina, it's just not worth it. Like there's just not enough economic activity. They're just going to have to lose uh, large swaths of uh, different uh, places up and down the East Coast. At least the maps will be able to, or will be more fun to draw in the future. Exactly. You'll get a, a whole nother, think of the car cartology industry that you're talking about, right? Like it's, uh, it's a huge, it's bringing back a dying art. Uh, Finally, a little bit of positive thinking for the market. They, instead <laughs> of being doom and gloom climate cocks. Maybe we can actually create things and build things in a tremendous way.